In a previous video, we created this scene using the progressive light mapper. Now, big lighting is great because it's very performant and allows for very detailed lighting. But if you want your objects and lights to move around, you of course need your lighting to update to these changes. Luckily, Unity has a bunch of tools for creating real-time lighting. So today we'll have a look at these tools and how to use them. You can always jump to the timestamps on the screen now if there's any particular feature you're interested in. This video is sponsored by the Unity Asset Store and IBM. IBM Watson Unity SDK enables you to to integrate powerful artificial intelligence in your Unity applications. With Watson Unity SDK now in the Asset Store, you can configure games and projects to understand speech, talk with users, and understand the intent of a user in natural language. The services include speech-to-text, text-to-speech, dialogue, translation, and natural language classification, and are accessible directly within the Unity environment. To get started, simply download and try out the IBM Watson Unity SDK for free on the Asset Store. Also check out the short series from IBM, which provides an overview view of all of the core features of the Watson Unity SDK. And with that, let's get into the video. So I've set up this example scene here, and as you can see, the lighting is currently very boring. The colors are washed out, there's only a single light in here, and it's just using completely standard settings. By the way, if you want to get your hands on the same environment that I'm using, you can simply download it off of dev assets. All the assets are pay what you want, and I'll of course have a link to them in the description. Now before we start messing around with lights in our scene, we want to make sure to set up all the appropriate settings. The first one is configuring our color space. To do this we go Edit, Project Settings and Player. And here we change the color space from Gamma to Linear. As you can see right away this darkens our scene, but it also adds way more color depth. We also want to go to our camera and make sure we have Allow HDR enabled. For the rendering path we have two options, Forward and Deferred. Now I've talked about the rendering path, HDR and the color space in another video on getting good graphics in Unity. So if you want to know what all this stuff means, I definitely suggest checking out that video. But for now just know that I expect to have a lot of real-time lights in my scene, and whenever that's the case, you're probably best off going with Deferred. Finally, we can edit our quality settings by going Edit, Project Settings and selecting Quality. And the main thing that we want to do here is up the pixel light count. This is basically a way to limit the amount of light calculations that we need to do. So in order to display all the lights in our scene, we definitely want to amp this up to say 20. If you want, you can also fine tune the shadow quality, but I'm just gonna leave this at high resolution. So now we've set up all of the right settings. But one more thing that I'd like to do before actually lighting my scene is adding post-processing to my camera. And that's because in order to utilize all the data captured by our camera whenever HDR is enabled, we need to use a post-processing effect called the Tone Mapper. Again, if you want to learn more about this stuff, check out my video on good graphics in Unity. For now, we can just go and open the Asset Store. Here we'll search for post-processing. We'll want to select the post-processing stack and import it. When you're done, you should see a folder in your project called post-processing. Then we need to add a component to our main camera, and the component is called post-processing behavior. This will apply the effects to our camera, and this takes in a post-processing profile. This is basically just an object that stores all of our effect settings. So let's go to the project, right click, go create, post processing profile, we'll call this CC for color correction. We'll select our camera and drag in our CC object. And now when we select it, we can see all the different effects that we can now apply to our camera. And the main one that I always make sure to check before adding lighting to my scene is color grading. The reason why is that under the color grading, you can see we have options for tone mapping. And now here comes a matter of preference. Some people like to use the neutral tone mapper and then do all of the color correction afterwards. But I've recently been really fond of the filmic tone mapper. As you can see, it really darkens our scene and adds a lot of contrast. But in my opinion, it also gives it this really cool filmic look. Just to make it a tiny bit brighter, I'm also going to go to the post exposure and add 0.4. So now that we've set up our most basic color grading, we're ready to start lighting our scene. I'm going to go Window, Lighting, and then Settings. And this is going to open up the lighting window. As you can see, we have a bunch of different settings in here, but we're actually going to ignore most of them. We're only going to focus on the first two modules. Under Real-Time Lighting, you just want to make sure to check Real-Time Global Illumination. And under the Environment, we have a few settings that we can play around with. The first one is the Skybox Material. Here we can of course change the skybox that surrounds our environment. And the cool thing about Unity's real-time lighting solution is that Unity will now automatically apply lighting to a scene depending on the skybox that we have applied. 
This is what we refer to as environment lighting. As you can see, the source is currently set to skybox and I have an intensity multiplier here. And you can see as I increase this, just how much it makes our environment blend in with the skybox. So whenever you're lighting an outdoor scene, I really recommend spending a lot of time finding the right skybox. You can always go to the asset store and search for skybox. And there are actually a lot of really great ones here. And many of these are actually free. One that I really like is the free HDR sky. Now, as you can see, if I add this to my project, switch to the scene view here and go and change the skybox material, I'm just going to change to the skybox day. This immediately impacts the lighting of our environment. And if I switch to sunset, you can clearly see how the intensity and color of the light changes. But for now, I'm just going to switch back to the default skybox. I'm going to set the intensity multiplier to one. And we can actually go in here and change from skybox to gradient. This allows us to create our own custom lighting gradient from the sky color to the color around the equator and the ground. Or if you just want to apply a flat color, you can do that as well. Whenever I'm lighting an indoor scene, I always make sure to set the color to a complete black. But this scene is not indoors, so I'm going to change it back to skybox and set the intensity to around 2. So now it's finally time to start adding actual light emitters into our scene. I'm going to get rid of my directional light here and show you how this is done. To add a light to our scene, we simply right click in the hierarchy, go light, and here we can select from three different real-time lights. Directional light, point light, and spotlight. The directional light applies light from a given direction. You can see if we add this to our scene, it applies to all the objects within it. It actually doesn't matter where it's placed. The only thing that matters is how we rotate it. As you can see right away, there are no shadows. We need to enable these manually. So we'll go under the shadow type and here we can select either hard or soft shadows. Hard shadows are of course always completely hard, whereas soft shadows are kind of more realistically blurred out a bit. Now we can position our directional light where we want it to be. I'd like it to kind of come from the left hand side here. We can also change the color of a light. I'm going to make mine a tiny bit warmer by tinting it orange, as well as the intensity of the light. One technique that I often like to apply when using directional light is what we refer to as two-point lighting. This is where we have a main light. I'm going to rename this to main light. That is the main source of lighting in our scene. This illuminates our subject from the front and then a bit to one of the sides. On top of the main light, we also apply what is called a rim light. I'm going to rename this one to rim light. And now this light comes from the back, kind of pointing in the opposite direction of the main light. Now for this light, we probably want to decrease the intensity a bit. And what we often do is tint the rim light a blue tone. Again, this helps it contrast with the main light. Currently, this effect is very subtle, but it's also supposed to be. We can go ahead and bump up the intensity a tiny bit though. So now that we have our main directional lights in here, it's time to make our scene feel more alive by adding point lights. Again, we want to right click in the hierarchy, go light and select point light. And just like directional lights emit light in a certain direction, point lights emit light from a certain point. So if we reset the transform on this and drag it into a visible part of our environment, we can immediately see that it starts applying light to this part of the environment. The intensity might be a bit too low here, so we'll bump up the intensity to say 2. And we can also adjust the range of our light. We can either do that by dragging on the sphere or changing it in the inspector. I'm going to set mine to around 20. So as you can see, this immediately gives a very cool effect, especially if we go in here and add shadows. However, if you have a lot of point lights in your scene, having all of them render shadows can be quite performance intensive. So I definitely recommend that you keep this at a minimum. But for now, I'm just going to set this to hard shadows. And as you can see, this immediately looks super cool. Now I'm going to go through the scene here and add a bunch of point lights with varying color. I find that for fantasy environments like this one, it's really important to play around with different vibrant colors. So I'll see you in a bit. So as you can see, that helped quite a bit. The scene feels way more interesting and less flat now. I also think that we might have exaggerated the amount of light that we need from the directional lights. So I'm going to go into my main light here and decrease the intensity a bit. I'd rather have the point lights take over and make it feel like most of the light is coming from the environment itself. 
Now I don't think it's needed for this environment, but we do have a third type of real-time light. I'm of course talking about the spotlight. The spotlight is fairly self-explanatory. It allows you to create spotlights within a scene. I found that I actually very rarely use this light, but it can be really nice for highlighting certain parts of a scene. Or of course for creating stuff like flashlights. Say we wanted to really emphasize these two skeletons, a way to do that would be put a spotlight right on top of them, maybe move it a bit closer. You can play with the range of the light here, as well as the spot angle, and then increase the intensity. And we can of course also add some shadows. And as you can see, it really helps our skeleton pop. But for now, I'm just going to delete it. Now, the last type of light that I want to add is actually not a real-time light. However, I'll show you a few tricks for making it look like it is. What I'm referring to is what we call emissive materials. So I would really like this doorway to light up. This way it could kind of act like a focal point for the scene. But how do we do this using lights? All the lights that we've seen so far do emit light onto the surroundings, but they aren't actually visible themselves. So how do we create an actually visible light? Well, to do that, we first need to create the object for our light. If you want to make a lamp, you can go inside of Blender or any other 3D modeling program and model out a lamp. In our case, we just want a flat doorway. So I'm just going to use a plane. We'll right click in the hierarchy, go 3D object and select plane. And it's going to create a flat plane inside of the game. I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees so it's pointing directly forward. I'm also going to size it down and place it in our door frame. Once we are satisfied with the placement of our plane, we want to go ahead and add an emissive material to it. To do this, we'll right click in the project, go create material, and we'll call this material glow. We'll select the plane and drag our glow material onto it. And now we can pretty much leave all of the settings as is here. The only thing that we want to do is go ahead and check emission. Here we can define a color for our emission. I want to make this a light blue, and I've actually prepared a color beforehand. You can go ahead and copy it if you want to. I also want to bump up the intensity of the emission, which we control over here. So I'm going to set that to 5. And as you can see, our object now looks very bright, but it doesn't have that glow-like effect, and it's still not influencing the rest of our environment. Well, for the first problem, we can fix that using a post-processing effect. So remember earlier when we added some color grading? Well, we can actually go in here and add some glow as well. We refer to this setting as bloom. And as you can see right away when I check it, there's really no doubt that it's working. We can go in here and we can adjust the threshold. This is how bright something needs to be in order for us to apply glow to it. I'm just going to set this to something like 2. Then we can also adjust the intensity as well as the radius of the glow. Now I don't want this to take over the entire scene, but I definitely want it to be there. So that was pretty easy. But it's still not really applying light to the rest of our environment. And the reason why is that Unity won't actually apply light from emissive materials in real time. You need to bake your scene in order for this to happen. But we can fake it. To do this, I'm simply going to use a few point lights. So let's take one of the point lights from our scene and duplicate it. Let's move it close to the doorway. And let's simply tint it in the light blue color. And as you can see right away, it looks like the light is actually coming from the door. It's that easy. No one is ever going to notice that we're actually using a point light to do this. And you don't even necessarily need to put it right on top of the door. Of course, this might give really nice shadows, but I like it more out here, where it's actually lighting up a larger part of the scene. So once we're satisfied with all the lights, I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, hit create empty object, and I'm going to rename this to lights. I'm then going to select all my lights and drag them in there. And I've actually placed my environment on a turntable. So if I go ahead and hit play, the entire environment is going to rotate. Now, of course, we want our lights to rotate with it. So I'm just going to take my lights here and turn them to the turntable. And now we can see our entire scene rotating and updating in real time. And the final thing that I always add to my scenes, which are lighted in real time, is a third post-processing effect. Now, this one is a nice one. Let's select our CC layer and let's go to the top and check ambient occlusion. And right away this might not do much, but we can play around with the radius and the intensity in order to really help add detail to our lighting. Ambient occlusion is basically just the shattering that happens when two surfaces meet. You can see this if I enable and disable it, that every time we have a sharp angle between some surfaces, ambient occlusion gets applied. 
Of course, play around with this effect to make it suit your scene, but I definitely recommend adding it. That's pretty much all of my real-time lighting tips for Unity. From here, I recommend you to play around with different lighting setups, different lighting settings, post-processing effects, and of course, trying to tweak these settings to make everything as performant as possible. And of course, make sure to have fun. That's pretty much it for this video. Make sure to check out the IBM Watson Unity SDK using the link in the description. You can get started for free. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in January and a special thanks to Sean Carey, Diego Geik, Dudeman, Diane Gein, Befio, Infinity PPR, Yorai Omer, Cyborg Mummy, Derek Heemskirk, Mur, Faisal Marify, Beard or Die, John Ramirez, DoubleTap45, James P, Superman the Great, John Beauregard, Jason Latito, Alex Rokitsky, Bjorn Fuhrknapp, Suni Jakobsen, James Rogers, Robert Bund, Rob Fern, and Erasmus.